And here I'd like to keep in mind and stress what I argued in the previous lecture, which is that I think that the most impressive aspect of the International Movement for Human Rights is not the official documents and official institutions, although they do provide important uh, influences in good directions also. Um, but the most important aspect, I think, of the global movement for human rights is the civil society grassroots activism that we see all over the world. We see it we, in the Arab Spring, we've seen it throughout the Middle East, we see it in China, we see it in Tibet, we see it across the Americas, we see it in Africa. That there is a, a, a huge population of human beings that often without the help of any official organizations and without the support of, uh, without adequate support of nation states are fighting for basic human rights, are talking in the terms of basic human rights, and that those people deserve universal human support. Lastly, I'd like to address in this context the question of anti-Semitism in, in human rights uh, practice. And I think, in fact, there is a serious problem of anti-Semitism. Um, more specific than anti-Semitism, I would call it racism against Israeli Jews. Um, I think the UN Council on Human Rights has clearly propagated racism and incited to racism against Israeli Jews. Um, and I think, unfortunately, it's a, it's a common um, occurrence to run into the claim that, let's say, the Palestinian people have a right to self-determination, but the Israeli Jewish population does not have a right to self-determination. Now, I think it's clear that um, since the first right of the International Covenant on, on Political and Civil Rights is the right of self-determination of peoples, to argue that one people has a right to self-determination and another people doesn't have a right to self-determination is, in fact, a form of racism. It's also the case, in my personal opinion, that the State of Israel has been involved and is involved in systematic and very serious violations of human rights. So we should not think that all the criticism of the State of Israel is necessarily um, coming from the perspective of some kind of anti-Jewish racism. Um, I think, in fact, if you read the reports of an organization like Human Rights Watch, you'll see that they're basically reasonable also vis-a-vis -vis the State of Israel. Um, even here, I would point out that I'm sorry that Human Rights Watch has not seen fit to denounce the incitement towards racism against Israeli Jews that's commonplace in the UN. I've read at least, I think, most of their criticisms of, of um, the UN Human Rights Council, and they, they never seem to, they've never chosen to point out that problem specifically. And I think that's, uh, I think that's a shame, and I think it's damaging for the, the uh, attempt to get the Jewish world, particularly the religious Jewish world, behind an agenda of international human rights. But if we were going to reject um, every international movement for worthy goals, like democracy or human rights or, or basic standards for workers or, or, or union organizations, uh, if we were going to reject every one of these global movements because they were racist against somebody, um, I think we would find that each one of us would be able to talk only to members of our own group. Um, Anti-Jewish racism is a problem. Um, racism of Jews against other people is a problem. Um, and we need not to reject human rights practice because of these failings, but rather to recognize that any form of racism, whether it's against Jews or by Jews, is absolutely in opposition to the essence of what human rights discourse and doctrine and practice is about. Um, and therefore, rather than reject the, the, the participation in this global movement for trying to establish a just world order uh, because of these failings, we should fight against these failings while being full participants. In conclusion, uh, I hope that by touching on these three points, I've addressed some of the important questions facing um, human rights practice and some of the most common reservations and skepticism vis-a-vis -vis the idea that human rights practice is a window onto a just global order. Um, I would encourage you, if you have further uh, reservations or arguments in this context, that you uh, let me know on the online forum, or you could also post a video response, uh, if you like. Um, and I'd, I'd like to address um, those questions also. Um, 
we'll move on uh, in our next class to the more mystical and esoteric, uh, Zoharic conception of Adam um, and how that fits into a Jewish theology of human rights. Shalom and be well.